Hi, this is Brian from The Sleeping Elephant. I'm going to review Kontiki by Thor Heyerdahl. This book is about a team of five Norwegians and a Swede who take a raft from Peru to Polynesia. It became a 4,000 mile trip as well as it took 100 days. This is an adventure book. In 2013, they made a movie of this as well. What inspired this trip is Thor was researching the Polynesians' background and was living on one of the islands and was researching the culture. And the theory is people from Asia sailed around and landed in these islands in the 1100s or 1200s. Thor's theory is people from South America and Central America sailed westward using the currents and the trade winds to colonize the islands. In terms of rationale and reason, it was because there was coconuts lined on all across the coast of South America and Central America, sweet potatoes, and a few words that matched some of the languages in Polynesia. So in 1947, they decided to take a trip and actually go forth with this expedition. They gathered some balsa weed all the way across the Andes and made the raft with eight or nine big logs. And here's a picture of it. This is what the raft looked like in the museum in Oslo. Just a simple raft, a little cabin, which I found surprising. A rudder, the mast, and the sail with the Kontiki god on it. They brought fruit, fish, water, and even a parrot. The name Kontiki is the sun god, as he is the old hero. And rumor is it that they sailed westward over to Polynesia, and that's how they discovered it. It was elegantly written. The language is very descriptive. And it's all about adventure and putting yourself out there, taking that risk. This raft even had a kitchen, a little cabin. It, they were laying on hay. And on the adventure, they talk about all the animals they ran into. A, a rare sighting of a whale shark, a deep sea fish with big teeth that was a snake that landed on their raft, as well as all the flying fish that they didn't have to fish for. They use it as bait to catch bigger fish. These fl And these flying fish would just land on the raft, as well as squid. Barnacles and crabs wind up infiltrating the raft as well. The sharks they got used to and finally became brave enough just to catch the sharks with grabbing its tail. In which I find out they are somewhat paralyzed. You never really see sharks swinging their tail. Here's my favorite excerpt from the book. Cold black seas towered up on all sides and glittered myriad of tropical stars drew a faint reflection from plankton in the water. The world was simple. Stars in the darkness. Whether it was 1947 BC or AD, suddenly became of no significance. We lived, and that we felt with alert intensity. We realized that life had been full for men before the technical age also. In fact, fuller and richer in many ways than the life of modern man. Time and evolution somehow ceased to exist. All that was real and that mattered were the same today as they had always been and would always be. We were swallowed up in the absolute common measure of history. Endless, unbroken darkness under a swarm of stars. Once I read that, I knew I had to mention that. Hopefully it hits you hard with that. It's really the simple pleasures that are the most important in life. And nowadays you have the battle of two worlds. The primitive versus the science. It's nature versus the city. Reality versus the delusion. And on these trips that you take, I'm talking to people that have never really gone anywhere. They've just stayed in just in a city. Is if you stay in nature more than a week or two or three weeks, you get connected with it. You're in the zone and there are no lines, no order. Everything is wild, even if you don't think it is wild. There are no tools, no GPS. And the Polynesians were known as the greatest sailors. They had to use the trade winds, the currents, the tides. They understood the stars. They had to memorize it season after season and how the rotations. They knew that the world was not flat. Also, this book contrasts with teamwork and how all six of the members had to work together. They had one Swede, which is kind of the oddball in these Viking trip. But they got along. They switched everything. There was no one who slacked. Of course, the Scandinavians already have a culture of working together. But you always hear that story of the venture alone, such as some people want to take a sailboat out alone. And I do think that is more masculine and it makes you more tougher. It's more of a cold approach. And on this trip, there was no woman on board, and it would have been much different if a female was on board. And in terms of discovering or creating habitats for human beings on these islands, they had to have brought women at some point. That's how all these islands flourished. There is a big mystery of how this happened. 
Maybe the parrot was the only female on board. Right? What do you do? What do you do? At the end of the trip, they winded up getting stuck on a reef on this country called Rawaya after 100 days at sea. And this is more of the most eastern part of Polynesia, so they didn't really go too deep into it, but they did reach it. Not with ease, with all the storms and drama, but they could have died hitting that reef. The best things that I would have enjoyed on the trip are the beautiful islands, the views, the sunsets every day, the connection with nature, as well as the tuna fishing. I would love to go tuna fishing. And to close this review off, is the book does inspire to want to take an adventure. But there was not nothing really discovered in this journey, is that these six Scandinavians can go across the ocean. It was something they wanted to prove to themselves. But the theories do not hold true. These are just theories, but it does typically look like the Polynesians actually come from Asia just due to, due to the genetics. But you never know. I challenge you to venture out and go on that grand adventure. Not so much as a team, but to go forth into the mystery itself and figure it out. Also go out into, say, a national park, not a fake park, but go out into nature. Thanks for listening.